Hey, hey, it's just me. Why is it that every time I just want to come home and relax, something crazy like this happens? Oh, this is the time you did house cleaning. Are you serious? Yeah, it's been ages since we last cleaned out the fridge. It's starting to smell like it, too. How long has it been since we went to that Taiwanese restaurant? Uh, like two days. And this is stinky tofu. It's supposed to smell like this. How about this peanut butter? Definitely gotta go. How so? Check the label. It's about to be expired. Uh, yeah, in like two months. Dude, you're way overthinking all this. Think about the millions and millions of germs that are growing in this thing. The last place I want them to be is in here. How can I not think about them? Wait, wait, they can't just let this all go to waste. Well, every single second we waste, there's probably a thousand more creeping, crawling bacteria that comes out from this. Ever heard of binary fission? I'm just trying to live a healthy life here. A clean, germ-free life. Clean living doesn't necessarily mean a healthy living, you know. What? That's impossible. Do you realize how many bacteria you're killing with that thing? Uh, so? They're germs. When do you become such a germ lover? I'm not a germ lover. I think it's because of that microbiology lab you were always at. Those germs are seriously getting into your head. I think you should have a better awareness of how good of a role germs have in our lives. Like through that yogurt. That one cup probably has up to 17 billion strands of live bacteria. Oh, disgusting. Really? So tell me, how's all this germ stuff a good thing? What do you mean? Like, how are bacteria like this beneficial? What's so pro about this biotic? Why shouldn't I be grossed out by microorganisms? Well, a little something like this. Relative to the human body, there are two types of microorganisms. Ones that are bad, which are called pathogens, and ones that are good. Millions of these good bacteria, fungi, and even viruses are living in our bodies, and they are collectively called the human microbiota. In fact, there are 10 times less human cells than microbial cells. Uh, I really feel like taking a shower right now. You find these colonies basically everywhere, so you can't really get rid of them just with a shower. They live in your mouth? lungs, intestines, skin, and a lot of other places. We call them commensal microorganisms because each one of them calls your body home. So, these aren't the usual suspects of disease? Nope, but they aren't just sitting there. Specifically, when we look at certain bacterial cell communities, they're communicating with each other all the time. How? Through cell phones? You're not that far off, actually. In a process called quorum sensing, they send out chemical signals called autoinducers into their surroundings. Through these molecules, they can tell each other where the food is, what other cells are doing, or when to create biofilms, which are essentially a complex network of structures for them to live together in. So basically, hundreds of tiny cities are living inside of me? Yeah, that's one way of putting it. It's pretty creepy to find out that millions of these bugs are holed up in my body. Yeah. Wait! So how did they get in here in the first place? Well, most of them have actually grown up with you. We're all first exposed to commensal microorganisms that come from our mothers in the womb. And no, they're not here to take over your body or anything. That's a relief. Well, at least not all of them. That's why you sometimes have to go to the dentist to get a filling. But for the most part, they're essential in pretty important processes in your body like detoxifying poisons, regulating your body weight, creating vitamins K and B12, developing healthy tissues, and protecting us from those bad germs. And all they're asking for in return is a free lunch. Okay, this is all good stuff, but how exactly do they protect me from getting sick? Well, there are so many different ways they do this, but let's focus on your intestinal microbiota. Sure. Shall we? We normally think that our white blood cells do all the heavy lifting and keeping us pathogen free, right? Well, commensal bacteria play a huge role as well in what is called the innate immune response. Pathogens are always looking for spots in your gut to settle down, but they are met with a big problem. Your gut bacteria have already taken up all the space on the lining of the gut. They also hog up all the oxygen molecules and make fatty acids and toxins called bacteriosins. These molecules inhibit the growth of pathogens, but don't affect our good bacteria. So all they give me is love, but all I give them is crap. 
Yeah, pretty much. And remember when I told you some bacteria use chemical signals to communicate? It turns out that they are able to talk with us as well in our more direct defense against pathogens, the adaptive immune response. Okay. When pathogens enter the gut through the food we eat, our good bacteria tell the cells that line our gut to make more mucus as a protective barrier. Our bacteria also tell our immune system to make antibodies such as immunoglobulin A that stick to pathogens so white blood cells can dispose of them properly. Oh. Not only that, but they also cause our immune system to make a molecule called IF gamma, which primes the white blood cell to go beast mode on these pathogens. You see, the fight in your gut never, ever stops. Do you know what this could mean? Yeah, just more genotyping, swabbing, and centrifuging. Just more plain old work. Sorry, it's just been the research I've been doing in the microbiology lab. I've been pipetting and pipetting all week and it's just so boring. I would never have guessed that studying about life could be so lifeless. Wait, what are you talking about? The stuff you're studying is awesome. Think of all the diseases we could solve. I'm sure there are some people that have disorders that prevent proper communication between their bodies and their microbiota. True. Recent studies are finding that imbalances in the microbiota may be correlated with diseases like colon cancer, IBD, autism, obesity, and even allergies. So you're right. I guess I just lost sight of the purpose of my work. Well, the bottom line is we need to get this info out to people. Yes, we should. So I guess you're okay with being around germs now? Uh, a little better now, I guess. Your methods are quite infectious. Maybe you'd like to come join me in the lab sometime. What? No, I'll probably spray all your bacteria with hand sanitizer by the end of the day. Just a gut reaction. Okay, Mr. Clean. But seriously, go finish your yogurt. <laughs>